You don't need a lot of expensive plugins to mix a great sounding song. You just need to know how to properly balance your tracks. I get a lot of emails from people asking how they can start mixing without having to spend a lot of money on plugins that they see everybody using. So in this video, I'm going to show you the key element to get great sounding mixes. Welcome to my channel. I'm Emily Bowie. I'm an audio engineer and sonic philosopher. And this is a channel where I help you get better at producing great sounding music. In this video, I'm going to go over with you how to spot unbalanced songs and how to correct them. But before we jump in, I want to see who all is here. If you're already familiar with balancing, then leave me one of the fader emojis. And if you're newer to mixing and you're watching this video to learn more, go ahead and leave the headphone emoji in the comments. All right, let's jump right in. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of examples here. This is a mix that I have that I am mastering at the moment. So I will have to keep that muted for copyright purposes, but what we're going to be looking at is the balance of this, what things look like when they're unbalanced, what things look like when they're balanced, and then what we can look at to know where we need to make our corrections and how we need to make those corrections. I'm going to be using the plugin Tonal Balance Control. I think that this is a wonderful plugin. This is not a sponsored video by Isotope or anything like that. I do not, am, I'm not affiliated with them by any means, uh, but this is something that I think is a crucial tool to learning what balance is about because balance is the key to mixing. It really is. You know, back in the day when we recorded to tape and we recorded through consoles, we didn't have very many tools to work with to achieve balance. And that was the ultimate goal of those audio engineers. Some of those consoles didn't even have EQ. So they used mic placement. They used the instrumentations to balance everything out that was coming out stereo. And in fact, it was really only coming out mono. Now you may have had two speakers, but it was the same thing coming out of both. Okay. So we really had to work on balance. That's how they created clarity. And that's how they created the best listening experience. So that it just didn't sound like a whole bunch of sound coming out. So what we're going to be using is some EQ to help balance this out. But first, I want to show you an example of a mix that maybe is a little less balanced. Of course, if this was something that was very drastically out of balance, unbalanced, then I would probably send that back and ask whoever mixed it to make those adjustments on the individual tracks, whether it was just improperly mixed or if we needed to make some corrections as far as the audio level of those tracks, if we needed to adjust those. So what I am going to do is just show you an example of what this looks like unbalanced. And I'll go through a couple of different views here to show you why it looks unbalanced. So I'm going to hit play now. So as you can see, and this is just a modern sounding song, we've got a lot of things that are out of place here. See how that's very unbalanced? The highs here look okay. This looks okay, actually. So we've really got the low here and then those high mids. Very unbalanced. And let's take a finer look at that. So what you're seeing here is that this is unbalanced because this has a huge dip in it. So in our low end, that's creating something that's unbalanced. We've got, we're pretty high in the low lows, and then it comes down here. So that's creating some, a lot of unbalance. Same thing with the high mids here. We've got a huge peak here and a huge dip here. So something is unbalanced in those areas. And so what we can do is we can, you know, add some EQ to correct those things. See, we're getting really out of control here. Okay. So I've taken the same thing, same track over here, and I've added some EQ. And we can actually look at the EQ down here. So with the moves that we've made in Ozone, because this is all interconnected, it's really cool. Again, not a sponsored video. And this is something that you don't have to buy. Um, 
you know, a lot of times we can just stick on a digital EQ that shows us our frequency frequency spectrum here. And you can tell when things are, are drastically, you know, out of, out of line. So you can kind of see, this is sort of a, sort of a figure that I don't want to say is standard, but, it, but it kind of looks like this in at least in more of your modern sounding songs, things that are going to translate well to radio, to streaming, all of your different devices. It's going to kind of look like this. And these are things that you can look up on the internet. All right. So now that we've got that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the EQ moves that we've made here. So remember when we said that our, our low end was a little, little out of control, well, we've lowered that. And then that big dip that we've made, we've pushed that up just a little bit. And then down here, I've made a little cut to try to level that out as well. And just a tiny little bit of a, a dip on those very uh, high end. I think it was just getting a little, maybe, maybe a little too washy up there, just for my taste. But anyway, so let me play that and, and show you the differences that we've got here. So you see how things have leveled out. Because now we've created balance. See how we had that huge dip there? We've brought that up. We've leveled it out. Same thing over here. And it really is that simple. And so now throughout the song, it's staying pretty consistent. And consistency is key. Balance is key. Balance creates a consistent sound throughout. Now, even if something drops off a little bit, so say if there's like a little quiet part in the song, that's okay. We don't really care about that as much. We want the kind of just that main sound that is more consistent throughout. So when you're looking for a section of the song to do this on, to check your balance, just find, usually a chorus is something. The chorus is, is usually where we're listening. Um, it's usually what's going to be most consistent. So chorus one is going to sound the same as chorus two. It's going to sound the same as chorus three, if that's the way that your song goes. Or maybe you just have a three verse song. Then you're just going to probably repeat one of the verses over and over again to check the balance. Thanks so much for checking out this video. If you found something helpful in it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up so that other videos like this will be recommended to you. And if you've got just another second, go ahead, hit the subscribe button so that you can see more of my videos just like this one. It also helps the channel out and we can keep this community growing together. But before you go, if you are looking for a little bit more in-depth videos on how to mix, master, and just get better in your musical journey altogether, I'm going to go ahead and leave a link to my Sonic Philosophy Patreon membership account that you can get all of the templates at. You can get all the courses at. This is a monthly subscription that was highly recommended, highly requested by my followers. I usually update that at least a couple of times a week, and we're going to have some really cool things going on in there. A lot of great discussions, a lot of mixing that's going on right now. I'm going to be mixing a song from start to finish, and I just uploaded the drum portion of that. So I'd love to have you come on and join the Sonic Philosophy. All right, y'all. Thanks so much for watching this video. And I can't wait to see y'all in the next one.